relationship between the United Nations Education Organization and the State of Israel is not a big secret. So it was quite a big surprise when the Simon Wiesenthal Center convinced UNESCO to host an exhibit about the 3,500-year relationship of the Jews and the Holy Land. Three days before the official gala opening at its headquarters in Paris, a message came out which postponed the exhibit to an unnamed date. We wanted to find out what really happened behind the scenes of this dramatic announcement. So we wanted to start at the very beginning of the story and go to the man who created the whole exhibit, Professor Robert Ristrich of the Hebrew University in Jerusalem, who was trying to bring a very important and sometimes forgotten point in the presence of the Jews in the land of Israel. This exhibit consists of 24 panels which recount the story of the Jewish people's very intimate historical connection with the land of Israel from the time of the patriarch Abraham until the present day. This exhibition tells the story of a continuous Jewish presence in the land that has never been interrupted at any point. And this narrative goes fundamentally against what most people imagine today when they're surrounded by so much disinformation and uh, propaganda. That this presence is very, fairly recent, that it's the result of the emergence of the modern Zionist movement in the late 19th century, that it's partly a product of the Shoah and uh, post-1945, whereas in fact it is probably the oldest single connection of any people to a particular piece of land. Once the announcement of the so-called postponement of the exhibit came out officially by UNESCO, the political response to it was not far behind, as we found out from the spokesman of the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Igal Palmor. It's not something that was uh, uh, planned and, and uh, produced by Israel, by the foreign minister or by Israel. This was a nice initiative by the Simon Wiesenthal Center, uh, which we, of course, sponsor together with the uh, embassy, the delegation of Canada and Montenegro. Invitations were sent out for the inauguration, and then all hell broke loose when Arab delegations uh, approached the director general to tell her to call the whole thing off because uh, they didn't like it. So uh, she yielded and she came out with a ridiculous excuse uh, saying that holding the exhibition now uh, would harm the chances of the peace process. Uh, how does that even connect? I have no idea. But that's UNESCO's uh, fiasco. Last weekend, UNESCO announced that it is cancelling the exhibit it wanted to host in France on the relationship between the Jewish people and the land of Israel. The explanation they gave was that the exhibit is going to hurt the negotiations. This exhibit is not going to hurt the negotiations. Certainly not negotiations which are based on facts and truths. Nothing can hurt that. It seems the organizers of the exhibit, the Simon Wiesenthal Center, who worked tirelessly for over two years with UNESCO to make the exhibit fair and balanced in the eyes of the organization, is very unhappy not only with the disregard of written agreements, but also with the message that UNESCO is putting out to the world with its unilateral action. To the best of my knowledge, there was no indication before the decision was made to suspend the exhibition came obviously as a shock on one level, and on another level, it's not all that surprising. In other words, the, it was obvious that there might be an Arab attempt to block it, and the question was whether UNESCO would give in. And unfortunately, even though UNESCO was a sponsor, they gave in, and the result speaks for itself. Every single word in that exhibition was vetted more than once. So, in other words, UNESCO knew exactly you know, what the content was and had agreed. We're in the middle of negotiations with people who deny uh, the entire course of Jewish history in the land of Israel. This is a very important exhibition. And it's important to get across the idea that the Jewish people didn't come to the land of Israel uh, after the Holocaust or because of the Holocaust, or even starting with the first Aliyah in 1880. We have a thousand year, thousands of year connection to the land of Israel, and this is exactly what the Arabs don't want the world to know.
Professor Withridge has a hard time believing UNESCO did what it did after they made him jump through the hoops to make the exhibit tailor-made to how the organization wanted the subject to be presented to the world. Given the fact that this exhibit did pass a very microscopic examination and uh, that I had to deal with seemingly endless you know, queries and questions and requests for evidence uh, or taking out this or that thing because it might be contra too controversial. Other things they requested were not removed and then there was a long process of negotiation about sometimes about every word, sometimes about a sentence or a paragraph. So it wasn't easy to get to the point that we arrived at. Frankly, I see no connection whatsoever between, you know, the fate of the negotiations uh, and uh, showing for one week a cultural historical exhibition in Paris, in, in UNESCO. So I think this is a bogus excuse, pretext used by UNESCO. You just don't do things like that. You don't pull the plug in this way. And that this is a slap in the face for the Jewish people, uh, for a fair play, for, um, you know, the, the so-called mandate of UNESCO itself, which is supposed to be about education and culture. And then at the first indication of some opposition to it from an Arab group, they capitulate, cravenly capitulate. Not to be quoted, sources claim that the cause for the upheaval of the Arab country members was the fact that the name of the exhibit was changed last minute as the invites were sent out. From People Book Land, the 35-year relationship of the Jewish people with the Holy Land, to the relationship of the Jewish people with the land of Israel. So was that enough to cause such a reaction? Only time will tell. For Jane One, I'm Ron Jacobson in Jerusalem.